Hey everyone, this is Derek Bros with the Conscious Resistance Network, and today we are going to talk about one of my favorite and one of the weirdest subjects out there, UFOs and government cover-ups and government psyops and more. But before we do that, I want to remind you guys to bookmark theconsciousresistance.com, scroll on down here, subscribe to our RSS feed, join us on Minds, join us on Steemit, join our Discord channel, uh, follow us on Remind, our text app list, so you can get updates directly to your phone. Subscribe on YouTube, and if you want to support me on a monthly basis so I can keep doing this wonderful work, then follow on Patreon. And of course, if you want to support our partner, My Brave Botanicals, click right here and you can get a free ounce of Kratom. They also have CBD products, which each of your purchases, a percentage of that goes towards supporting my efforts and the conscious resistance. So, thank you for that. All right, now I don't know if you guys have noticed, but in recent months, really in the recent years, the last year to be specifically, there's been this huge increase in reports on the potential for UFOs. When it came out in the New York Times that it was revealed that the Department of Defense, the Pentagon, was finally confirming that they do have a division that researches UFOs, and they actually released a couple different UFO videos. Some of you may remember this. And this has actually led to a couple of different things. For one, a new TV show from the History Channel called Unidentified, uh, and it's basically the media's version of get to meet the inside people who have been researching UFOs for decades and for a number of years, and now these people are choosing to come out and to speak about it and and blow the whistle. And those some of those folks, let me see if I can show you real quick, are involved with the To the Stars Academy, which is something that I don't really trust that that much, not only because... Well, the main guy leading it is the guy from Blink-182, Tom DeLonge. And uh, I don't know, it just seems like such a odd story that this former pop-punk star decides to follow his passion for UFOs and then recruits all these military, former military people uh, to come join his team to start exposing the truth about UFOs. I don't know. For me, it just plays too much into the hands of the idea of a controlled opposition of disclosure. Now, for those who are unaware, disclosure is the idea that the government or the media and the people in power will slowly start releasing information about the UFO phenomenon and telling us the truth. And one of the people who's been pushing this for a long time is Dr. Stephen Greer, who has been all over uh, the place talking about you know, his experience and his exposure, again, saying that he has assembled a team of people who are revealing the truth about UFOs. And Stephen Greer basically has the Disclosure Project, and there's the uh, Real Disclosure Project, I think, or the Full Disclosure Project, because the UFO community is just as divided as every other community. But my point with explaining all that is there are people out there who are waiting for disclosure to happen, waiting for the, the media and for the government to start revealing the truth about UFOs. And maybe that's what's taking place. Let's take a look at some of these stories. This is a local news story here in, I think this is it, in Vegas, which, by the way, I'm in Vegas right now for the next couple of days. Exclusive I-Team confirms Pentagon did release UFO videos. Again, talking about those UFO videos that I mentioned before. Uh, this was back in April. And then we have this one. This is from... Uh, live science former head of pentagon's secret ufo program has some strange stories to tell and it's talking about intelligence officer luis elizondo who again is a part of the tv show unidentified on the history channel and he apparently served as the former director of the advanced aerospace threat identification program launched in 2007 to study the reports of ufo encounters and this was reported as i said in 2017 by the new york times and now he is a part of a new show, Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation, which premiered May 31st. So it's been on TV for just a few weeks. And the interesting thing is sometimes these articles or these these uh, posts that appear to be articles are actually just commercials for television shows. And it seems like there is a big push to promote this guy, Luis Elizondo, and his story and, again, the, t the TV show. And even the Washington Post is getting in on this. Check out this title. UFOs exist and everyone needs to adjust to the fact. Can you imagine this? Like, I've been researching UFOs since I was a small child in elementary and, and junior high, obsessed with these kind of things. And never did I ever expect that there would be a title like that on the Washington Post. 
because this is the sort of thing that you get made fun of for disgusting, or at least prior to 2019 it was. But now the Washington Post says everyone needs to adjust the fact that UFOs exist. Then we have this one from CNN Espanol. Uh, the per Peruvian Air Force confirmed an unidentified craft near the airport in Lima. So it's even being seen elsewhere. Uh, another CNN one here. Senators receive classified briefing on UFO sightings. This is just June 20th, just a week ago. Um, USA Today. No explanation. Flying objects over Kansas City leave locals suspecting aliens. That one's even more bold than anything we've seen before. Not just saying it's UFOs, but admitting that locals suspect aliens. And not even saying anything like, oh, the local tinfoil hat wearers, you know, because that's what you would kind of expect. Or that at least that's what I've come to expect over the years. Then we have this one, another local news report. Mysterious white dot appears in the sky. Mysterious bright white dot in Dayton skies may be part of a government program. There's the white dot. And you can read more about that. I'll put some of these links in the description below. Uh, Curiosity snaps strange glowing light on Mars. Now, watching Mars and determining what the heck's going on over there has been a pastime of many UFO researchers for years. There's dozens, if not hundreds, of, of uh, YouTube channels dedicated to just watching the moon and watching Mars. But although IFO, I fucking love science, is not really a you know, mainstream publication, just the fact that any kind of science website is is willing to post something like this, I think shows that we're in a different era. Then you got uh, Vice, meet the Top Gun pilot who chased a UFO and an F-A-18F Super Hornet. David Fravor, who again, I think this guy is part of the same TV show, so he's making his rounds. Stars and Stripes, I floated inside. Man returns to the site of 1973 UFO abduction as it gets a historical marker. Now UFO abduction is getting a historical marker. This was originally published in the Washington Post. June 26th. Today's uh, July 2nd. So this is just recently. These are ongoing right now, these, these reports. And then I found this one from The Intercept, which I think is important as well. The media loves this UFO expert who says he worked for an obscure Pentagon program. Did he? And then they go into the TV show, History Channel, Unidentified Inside America's UFO Investigation. Uh, 2017 headline from New York Times. So again, this all comes from the 2017 New York Times report. That's if this was a psyop, if this was a government-ran disclosure, whether real or or fake, it started in 2017 with the release of those first videos, and then you started hearing about Tom DeLonge into the Stars Academy, and then these different people started popping out, and now this History Channel show is running with the story and it's you know every week they have this really dramatized reality show style reports on what the aliens are up to or what the ufos might be and it's like they're leading us somewhere where is it leading well the interesting thing is that uh, the this journalist here at the intercept says they've been trying to look more into elizondo and to confirm that he actually worked in this um this department that researches aerial phenomena and Pentagon spokesperson Christopher Sherwood told him Mr. Elizondo had no responsibilities with regard to the AATIP program. Now, of course, they could say that they would say that if it was true, if he did indeed work there, because they're just not confirming or denying, right? Because technically, he says in the show, I watched a couple episodes, he says, I can't really tell you everything I know, but I can try to find other people who can add pieces to the puzzle so we can present a full image. Now, he could be telling the truth. He could also be full of all of it is what I've been thinking. If you look at this guy, yeah, he just looks like a regular guy. But to me, the whole show, obviously they've got directors, they've got money and everything. But the whole so show, it seems like the people they're finding, they're 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 pretty good, you know, at what they what they talk about. They're not just like scientists who are just, you no, know, like I'm not that good on camera kind of thing. It's like these these guys all seem like they're pretty good in front of a camera, and maybe they've been coached by the history channel staff to better get their story out or maybe the whole thing's a psyop and these are actors and uh, of course they talk about tom delange blink 182 longtime ufo enthusiast and you know the interesting thing to note though where's the quote i was looking at okay so right here is elizondo on the lookout for aliens or a bad guy from his old spook life because he 
is an agent of the government, you know, working in clandestine programs. Like, is, is this guy really somebody we can trust? Is there really anybody from the U.S. government we can trust? On one hand, I'd say, cool, it's good whenever people from the U.S. government want to come out and say, hey, this is what I knew. This is what I had a, a part in, and now I'm, I'm leaving the government, and I'm going to expose it. But I don't know that we can really trust them. This is why I, I question this. You know, I rec recommend reading this article at the very least. I'll post this one below. Um, I worry about a fake disclosure program. Now, look, the reality is I think that UFOs are real. I think that aliens are real. I think that it's impossible. If space is real, if what we look up, those stars are real, and I'm willing to question that even, but if they are indeed real, then the, the fact is that there's going to be life out there, extra dimensional life, other planetary life, planetary life, um, other life forms we can't even imagine, coming in forms we can't imagine, with technology we can't imagine, it seems pretty basic to me. Uh, but the, tr the, the, the crux of the matter is, how long has the government known this? Some people say after World War II, after nukes started to be used, government started to get in contact, like uh, Eisenhower started to get in contact with UFOs and with alien life, and they've started to get technology which has led to a lot of the advancements we see and a lot of the advancements that the military hides from the people. Others say the whole thing is fake and that this is all just a psyop, um, you know, and there's that quote from Reagan about how people would put apart, put aside their petty differences if we had a, a threat coming from, you know, some, some greater force, like an unseen threat, not just terrorism, but maybe alien life from another planet, that the world would unite together against this unseen threat and that kind of plays into a theory that is known as Project Bluebeam. This idea that there would be a faked alien invasion controlled by the people in charge that would use all kinds of technology and maybe even real craft to fake an alien invasion in order to freak people out and in order to rally them together as one world to fight off this alien threat. And we successfully fight off the alien threat, whether real or imagined. Some people think, oh no, the, the good aliens are coming here and the bad people in charge of Earth are going to tell us that they're coming for us and so we're going to fight them off and yada, yada, yada. Like again, I'm, I'm kind of getting into some theory here and I understand that this isn't hardcore journalism based off complete facts, but we're analyzing what other people are now telling us is a reality. And so the theory goes that the, the world will unite against this alien threat, whether real or imagined, whether real or imagined and faked using all kinds of existing technology, holograms, voice to skull technology, etc. In order to reunite the world as one, one world, one government against this united threat, and that that could be the beginning of what people have long feared is the new world order. Now, that's quite an imaginative theory. I recommend everybody looking into Project Bluebeam, Serge Manast, and uh, of course, uh, Bill Cooper wrote about it in Behold a Pell Horse, and, and come up with your own theories. But at the very least, I think we can say like, wow, look at all these different headlines. This has never happened before. This is new that so many outlets are talking about these things, and not, again, not including tinfoil hat in the headline. But... Uh, it's just something I wanted to share with you guys. Like I mentioned, I'm on the road here in Las Vegas. I told you guys I was going to be coming to Vegas to do some journalism. If you haven't seen this video, here's how you can help me crowdfund investigative journalism. Check that out. Um, I'm doing a report on the Western Shoshone fight against the Yucca Mountain site, nuclear waste site. And uh, thanks to some supporters out there, I think we're going to get back to documentaries very quickly here. And I did receive all the emails from people who are interested in editing. I will be responding shortly. And I'm also doing some blogging, so you'll get to see kind of behind the scenes of my trip once I get home and, and edit that up. But uh, in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for the support. We hit 30,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can push it past that. It's taken me since October of last year. We went from 8,000. Now we hit 30,000. So we've tripled in less than a year. That's pretty cool, but I know we can do better. So please keep sharing my work. Keep inviting people to check it out. And thank you so much for the support. Until next time, remember, you are powerful. You are beautiful and you are free. Peace.